Hello, welcome back to these videos where Teacher Kent teaches you something every day uh, from this slice of pie page, of course, from Apple Pie English School in Japan. So, this is my hobby videos where I explain something. Some of my students ask me, well, how did you know how to do that or where did you learn how to do that? So, this is my hobby videos where once a month I explain some hobby I did when I was young. I'm going from kind of longest to shortest, but so far, well, let's see what I've done. Billiards, so I've explained about billiards and chess, uh, playing cards, Boy Scouts, let's see, dancing, uh, ROTC, and Red Cross. So please check out, uh, and let's see, yes, in, in today's video, we're going to talk about driving. So if you want to check out any of those videos, please check those out on those hobby pages. So before I start, though, don't forget to give us a like below. So today, we're going to learn about driving. Driving in America, and, and for me, what driving means. So don't forget to like below and subscribe, and of course, uh, share this video with your friends and family. We want more people to learn English quicker. So of course, today's videos are going to be about driving, and let's see. Yes, so driving is very important in America. I should explain the difference in America and, and J first than Japan. Japan is, I think, 18 years old. You can learn how to drive. And even that, a lot of college kids don't have, they have trains and buses everywhere in Japan, so they don't have to drive as much, or there's not a need for it anyway. But in Memphis, where I grew up, Memphis, Tennessee, in the middle of America, quite busy. The roads are quite busy, and there's not great transportation. My, tr my town, for example, has only two trains a day, long-distance trains. They're going to Chicago or New Orleans. So at 10.30 a.m. and 10.30 p.m., there's one train a day going either north or south. So because of that, yes, it's uh, inbred in us to be driving culture. So some other states like California are even more than Tennessee, but we learn driving at a very young age. So the difference is in America, junior high and high school, we actually have a parking lot where students can park, especially high school kids can park. You usually have to be older to get a parking space, but they'll still give you a space. So my first lesson, you could say, in Japan, they go to driving school. So my first time I learned was my father. I used to bug him, like, let me drive, Dad, let me drive, let me drive. And he's like, okay, son, go ahead. And he just let go of the wheel, which is, at the time, I thought he was crazy. But I learned later, for his generation, that was typical how they taught. It's like when they teach swimming, just boom, go in the pool, and they'll throw you in the pool. So I had to try to turn at 13 years old, and I was trying to turn the a wheel, but it's no power steering, so it was very difficult to turn. Oh my god! So, but anyway, that was my first experience touching the real wheel of a car. Later on, of course, my dad taught me little by little, and that's how we learn. Like in a parking lot, your dad will usually, uh, maybe your mom sometimes, but mostly for me, my dad. My dad taught me how to drive, and I loved it. And eventually, I got a car. My first car I bought, I was 14 years old. So in America, you can legally drive at 16 years old. But if you have a job working uh, full time, you can get a license at 15 years old because you need to provide money for your family. And then so at 14, I couldn't actually legally buy a car. So I bought a car under my family's name. But at 13 was my first lesson. So at 13, I had first lesson. 14, I could legally, uh, I bought a car for the first time. And 15, 16, so when I was in high school, I had three cars. Most people in Japan freak out, well, you had three cars? Yeah, but all of them worked great. <laughs> So, uh, put them all together, it'd probably be like $3,700, maybe, I paid uh, back then. So, of course, maybe one car was $800, one car was $500, one car was uh, $2,400. Well, my favorite car was my $800 car. I wish I could find it again. It's a 1972 Ford LTD. So, it has a huge engine. I think it's one of those, at the time... The muscle cars generation it's one of the second biggest engines that exists it's a huge huge engine so it goes really fast but anyway i didn't like driving because of how fast it went is i like driving because there's a few things i do like i said dancing before i think shower it's not really a hobby but dancing showering and driving is the only time i'm completely at peace so if i have stress about something i'll just drive or i'll dance and but dancing is limited because only nighttime and it's hard to find a bar, maybe, a dance club. And, of course, showering is okay, too, but it's very short, only three minutes. So driving is the easiest way to relieve my stress. Like one time in college, even, I had a fight with my girlfriend, and uh, a friend had already let me borrow her car uh, for our date, I guess, and I disappeared. <laughs> she freaked out. Like, nowadays, they'd freak out. Like, what the hell? Where'd he go? What happened to him? And I actually just 
kept driving. I just didn't have a purpose where to go. I just kept driving until I got tired and I stayed in the hotel. And uh, when I woke up in the morning, I realized, wait a minute, how selfish am I? That's her car. And she, and more to the point, she's probably worried, where are you? Where'd I go? So I, of course, brought it back to her. And I apologized profusely, uh, so strongly, I, I apologized to her. But the point that I'm getting at is, not just me, but many Americans, but me especially, that if I want to relax something, I'll just drive. So I've done many trips in around America. For example, in Kentucky, I had to go to Orlando, Florida for a championship for my business uh, team from my college, and all of my classmates flew, and it was a free trip. The airplane was paid for. I said, no, 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 let me exchange the airplane ticket. I'll just drive down to Florida. It's a 16-hour drive, and they're like, what? Can't, you're going to drive by yourself? Yeah, yeah, no problem. I'd rather drive than wait in the airport. And one time in California, Los Angeles, I drove up to San Francisco. So I drove around Japan too. Uh, so I drove to San Francisco instead of taking the airplane like my friends took. And one time they went, we had to go on a school trip from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. Again, I drove instead of flew. Uh, it's less stress for me. No luggage, not stuck in the airplane. Plus I have control of when I want to stop, where I want to stop. If I want to take a side note, if suddenly I go, oh, I want to go to the Grand Canyon, bam. I can just go there. So in my driving, I've driven 25, more than 25 states across America. Sorry, I was looking at my map. So 25 states. I've also driven in Japan as well and other countries. But in America, probably the longest I took was uh, one time. So I'm from Tennessee, and my daigaku and my graduate school was in California, Los Angeles. And I had already moved back to Tennessee, but I left my stuff in California. I had to go back to California to pick up my stuff from the luggage or from a storage place and pack it up and bring it back to Memphis. And because um, my girlfriend was coming in from Japan, so she flew into L.A. and she flew out of L.A. So I had to drive from Memphis to, uh, sorry, I had to pick her up actually in Georgia. She, she flew into Atlanta, Georgia. I picked her up in Atlanta, Georgia, and we, we had to go to Memphis, uh, sorry, go to Los Angeles, pick up my stuff and drive back to Memphis. So we actually did, from L.A. to Memphis, I drove 7,500 kilometers, I guess, in five days. So I rented a van to move my stuff back. But because her, I, she was not Atlanta, she was Los Angeles. So she arrived in Los Angeles, she had to leave Los Angeles. So I, I met her in Los Angeles, I flew to Los Angeles, and we rented the van and drove to Memphis and turned around and drove back. So 25 hours straight, I drove the distance, which is about 3,200 kilometers to Memphis, then stayed like overnight, and then bam, 3,200 kilometers back, we stayed in Vegas, and then bam. So in one week, 7,200 kilometers, or in miles, probably about 5,000 miles, about 4,800 4, miles. So we did all in five days. <laughs> so when I returned the car, like, what the, where did you go? So they were quite shocked. So anyway, uh, that's my hobby for today, of course, uh, driving. So I hope you enjoy driving too. If you ever go to America, yes, I recommend it. Uh, the gas was very cheap when I used to do it, and the highways are all free. Not all. I should say New Jersey and maybe near Orlando, Florida, there's a few toll roads. But 90%, 99% of American highways are free, so you can go as far as you want. And it's great. Uh, it's easy to drive around. I should also say... Uh, maybe I'll make a diff different video about that, but also part of driving. The highway system is so neat in America that if it's an even number, like 40, or 44, or 90, or something like that, uh, it's going to east to west. And if it's an odd number, like uh, 59, 95, uh, 63, it's going north to south. And then, of course, a three-digit number, like 240 or 440 or 215, it's going in a circle around the city. So that's easy to know when you're in America if you're lost. Like, Highway 40, where am I? Oh, Highway 40, it's it's an even number. It has to be east-west. Oh, Highway 59, where am I? Oh, okay, 59, it has to be north-south, for example. Or, oh, Highway 240, ah, it has to be. Or 405 in Los Angeles. 405, ah, it has to be a circle around the city. Okay, thank you very much, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. So have a good day, and see you again. See you.